The case of Stephen Avery is one that has gotten a lot of people curious as to what really happened. Was this really a case of a man killing someone so soon after being free, or was he set up because he was someone falsely convicted of doing a crime and thus would be more susceptible to being persecuted by the law? And if it wasn't Avery who did the crime, then who did? Well, a lot of people think it might have been a nephew of his, but not the one you're thinking. Allow us to show you how new evidence from Kathleen Zellner links Stephen Avery's nephew, Bobby Dassey, to Teresa Hallback's disappearance. Number six, Teresa Hallback's murder. To understand how Bobby is a suspect and why new evidence links him and not Stephen Avery to a crime, we need to look at the crime first, one that has gotten many people talked over the years. In 2005, a woman named Teresa Hallback was murdered and Stephen Avery was arrested after blood had been found in her truck that was linked back to him. Avery wasn't the only one arrested, though his nephew, Brendan Ray Dassey, was arrested as well and dubbed an accomplice in the case. From the outset, Avery claimed that not only was he innocent, but that the county was trying to set him up due to the civil suit that he had put against them. If you don't know, he was wrongfully convicted by the police decades before on another crime and had barely been out of jail before this next case emerged. As the case went on, there was a lot of curious things that were going on with the police and the prosecution that led many to believe that this may not be as simple as the case was made out to be. Not least of which was that Dassey did confess to being an accomplice, but many argue, including Dassey himself, that it was a forced confession, that the police all but tricked him and suggested to him that he was guilty and needed to confess. Dassey was noted to not have the greatest mind and was very suggestible in regards to conversations. And with that came a whole slew of questions about the trial itself. As for Avery, despite the county he was suing stating they would not be involved in the case, many officers from the county were involved in the case and some even found crucial evidence that Avery was guilty. So as you can see, there was a lot going on here and it was so much and so controversial that making a murder was done in two parts on Netflix to cover it all and question exactly what was true, what wasn't, and whether there were other answers to be found here. Which of course brings us to number five, Bobby Dassey. Bobby Dassey is Stephen Avery's nephew. In fact, Bobby was one of the key witnesses used by the prosecution in the trial against his uncle. In the trial, he testified that he saw Hallback taking photos on Avery's property, but did not see her again after she went into Avery's trailer, even stating that her car was there at the house when he went hunting, but was gone when he came back. However, according to Zellner, Avery's lawyer, that's not what happened at all. In a court motion, she alleges that Bobby Dassey planted the car there to put suspicion on his uncle. Zellner also brought forth a new witness who came forward with information. Thomas Sawinski claims he was delivering newspapers to the Avery salvage yard during the early morning hours of November 5, 2005, when he saw a shirtless Bobby Dassey and an unidentified older man pushing a dark blue RAV4 down Avery Road toward the junkyard. The man, according to this new witness, was in his 50s and 60s, while Avery at the time of the murder in 2005 was in his 40s. While you can argue the age of others based on looks, that's still a pretty steep difference. Plus, he also described the older man as having a large frame and a long gray beard, which Avery did not perfectly match in terms of description at the time. Sawinski then said Bobby tried to block him from exiting the property, but he drove into a ditch to get around him and was able to leave. He then went on to claim that he called the Manitowoc Sheriff's Office to report his encounter with Bobby, but was told by an officer, we already know who did it. Pretty telling, wouldn't you say? Number four, Sawinski's recollection. The new witness opened up more about the situation and gave his eyewitness account. I felt very afraid as I approached the two individuals because Bobby Dassey attempted to step in front of my car, blocking my exit, Sawinski said. I was within five feet of Bobby Dassey and my headlights were on the entire time. He went on, Bobby Dassey looked me in the eye and I could tell with the look in his eyes that he was not happy to see me there, Sawinski said, adding, he felt the two men were doing something creepy. Needless to say, when Zellner heard about this, she was elated and went to use this to help Avery. The witness provides the most important evidence in the case to date, Zellner told Newsweek in a statement. He not only discredits the state's star witness, he links this person to the murder. The police ignored his tip. 
Stephen would not have been convicted if this evidence had been known. Number 3. Why frame his uncle? That's the question, isn't it? Well, apparently, the family Avery and Dassey aren't the best people of the bunch. Even though Stephen Avery is possibly innocent in this case, he's by no means a 100% innocent man. He went and spent time in jail for true crimes he did commit and hasn't been the most mentally stable person. Some of his other family members apparently had that same issue. And that's where Bobby comes in. Because if he was someone capable of committing murder and someone who tried to hide evidence, then that means he would be smart enough and cruel enough to go and frame his uncle. Why? Simple. He already had been in jail before, multiple times. And you could argue that Bobby felt the county courts would be less inclined to believe Stephen due to the past history even in spite of his most serious offense being overturned, versus someone who had never had a crime like this put against him. And don't forget, Bobby was a key witness for the prosecution. As a result of that, he could have easily told them whatever he wanted if it meant going and getting Avery put behind bars and keeping his nose clean of the matter. Number 2. What this could mean Let's say all of this is true. Let's say that the police did not care about what the new witness said and that he did file a report about what he saw and that the police, who again were being sued by Avery for the previous false conviction, ignored it and the prosecution didn't disclose it and so on and so forth. So what would happen or could happen to Avery? Well, if this ruling of a Brady violation comes to pass, it would mean that the conviction would be vacated and Avery, along with other nephew, Brendan Dassey, would likely be freed on the spot. At present, that has not happened. But if this is proven credible, this could literally change everything. And it should be mentioned that if freed, Avery has every right to go and sue the county and state for falsely imprisoning him and his lawyer in Zellner is honestly pretty great at doing those kinds of lawsuits. So he would get paid very well, more than likely for his troubles. Number one, Bobby's fate. The other thing that would need to happen though to make this a truly happy ending is for Bobby Dassey to be arrested if he is indeed proven to be the true culprit. Because while Avery has been rotting in jail, Bobby Dassey has been free to do whatever he wants, which is not justice at all. All in all, this case reeks of foul play and deception on multiple levels. So where this truly ends is up to the courts. But as shown, they don't exactly have the best judgment at times when it comes to Avery. Hopefully that'll change, eventually. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at Bobby Dassey and how he might just be the real culprit behind the death of Teresa Hallback? Do you think that the evidence and testimony found by Avery's lawyer proves there's more going on here than was originally anticipated? Do you think that this could lead to a new case if allowed to be presented? Let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next time on the channel.